Okay, so we're back with another tutorial video. For this video, we're gonna learn how to make a simple timer program. Uh, basically what this video, or what this program is gonna do is it's gonna take in a number of seconds from the user, and then it is going to uh, count down from the number that the user types in using these sprites right here. So this program will take in a number that is greater than zero. So it'll take in one. Um, it's also gonna take in an integer. So we'll just assume it's taking in an integer, which is a whole number. So it can take in between one and 999 inclusive. So this can be up to 999 and then it's gonna count down. And then when we get to the end of the program, it's going to say completed and it's gonna flash the numbers a few times. Okay, so for this program, you will have some starter code, which is located on the website. And uh, it's gonna look like this. So this is what the starter code's gonna look like. So there are a few things that are already created for you, and I'm gonna walk through that really quickly. So when we click the green flag here, our variable called countdown is gonna switch back to zero. We're also going to show the costume intro text, and I'll show you what that looks like. So when I click on the text, sprite down here on the bottom right and i go to costumes you'll see that there are three costumes so the intro text says enter a countdown time uh, we have another sprite that says invalid number please try again and then we have one that says completed so what's going to happen is uh, when we start the program it's going to say enter a countdown time like it does here it's going to show that sprite and then you'll notice i have an empty ask block this will allow me, so if I hit the green flag, you'll see that it gives me a, um, a little box to type in. So rather than the sprite actually saying something, we will just have the, um, the sprite have some text on it. All right, once we do that, we set our answer to countdown. So we set the variable countdown with whatever we type in. Then we hide the, um, we hide this sprite. So for example, if I type in 10, you'll see that the sprite then hides itself. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make sure that the number is in the correct range. So if it's less than one or if it's greater than triple nine, uh, we're, we have a loop right here that is going to force the user to type in the correct number. And then it's just gonna say invalid text each time. So if they type something in that's invalid, it is going to flash. So for example, if I type negative nine, it'll say invalid number, please try again. Let's say I type 3000, invalid number. But if I type in 10, that will work, okay? So once we have the correct number, we are going to use what's called a broadcast block. So what a broadcast block is, is when a certain block of code is finished running, we can broadcast a message. And when that message is received by another block of code, that block of code will then run. So for example, here, when I say broadcast start, we have a little chunk of code right here that actually runs our timer. So this is gonna be the official timer. So when that start message is received, we repeat a wait one second command, and then we change our countdown by negative one. So for every second, our countdown is gonna just decrease by one. When that countdown is finished, it's gonna broadcast a message that says end. And when the sprite receives that message, and again, I'm still in the text sprite, when it receives that message, it's going to switch over to complete text, which is this sprite right here, or this costume. And then it's going to show itself and then hide itself every 0.5 seconds. So it's basically gonna flash five times, and then it's just gonna show itself. And then again, when I click the green flag, you'll see that the program resets. It says enter a time, countdown gets set to zero, and then we can start again. Okay, so that's sort of how this little block of code or these few blocks of code work. And then if I flip over to the other sprites, you'll see that there is already some code for you. You're going to add, or we're going to add our code to this area right here. And this is what's going to allow each of these sprites to change as the countdown is happening. And uh, before we do that, so a couple things that we're gonna need to do. Um, so let me just show you up here. So one of the things we're gonna learn about in this program is how mod works and how floor division works. And that's actually how we're going to change the sprites. 
So if I go over to one of these numbers, you'll see in costumes up here on the top left that I have a costume that goes from one to zero. So there are 10 costumes here. So we need to figure out how to change these costumes so that my countdown timer actually works. Uh, and before you do anything else, please make sure that you uh, s that this is labeled up here, uh, that you have a name on your file. And ideally you wanna put your last name up at the top. Uh, that just makes sure if you turn this in that we know who is actually turning in the program. So last name, underscore, and then whatever the title of your file is called. Okay, so let's look at mod and floor division. So you'll see here that I have a couple example blocks of code for you. And uh, what we have here is we have these two ideas. One's called mod, one's called floor division. Uh, what mod does is mod is just regular division, except instead of giving you the normal answer, it's gonna give you the remainder. So if I were to take five and divide it by two, uh, normally, two, uh, if, if you did this on a calculator, five divided by two would be 2.5. However, when, when you use mod, you'll see that it gives you the answer one. So that means that two goes into five, two times evenly with one as a remainder. Okay, now that becomes very, very helpful for a number of things, which you'll see when we make this program. The other thing is this idea of floor division. So in order to do floor division, I just grab a divide block and I grab a uh, one of these ABS blocks. So I'm gonna change it from absolute value to floor and I'm gonna put the division inside of it. And so if I divide five by two, right? Let me just show you what this looks like before we do floor division. So you can see that it's 2.5. When I put it inside floor division, it's just two. And all floor division does is it says, how many times does two go into five evenly? And we know that it goes in evenly twice and it doesn't care about a remainder. It doesn't care about a decimal place. It just gives you the whole number value. So that's what floor and mod do. Now we can use it in our program because what it allows us to do is it allows us to isolate a place value in our number. And there's only three rules that you have to know to make this work. The first one is if you wanna grab the number on the far left. And so what I mean by that is if I wanna grab this one value right here, the far left value, all you have to do if you wanna grab the far left value of any number, whether it's a four digit number, a two digit number, a hundred digit number, it doesn't matter. You divide, you floor divide by the place value that the number is in. So for example, this one is in the thousands place. So I divide it by, I floor divide it by a thousand and that'll give me the one. Then the second rule you have to know is any of the numbers in the middle. So not the one on the far right and not the one on the far left. All you have to do is floor divide by its place value. So if I wanna grab this eight right here, if I wanna grab that eight right there, that is in the hundreds place. So I'm gonna first floor divide it by its place value, which is 100, and then I just mod it by 10. That will give me the eight that's in the hundreds place. Same goes for the seven. So the seven is in the tens place. I have floor divide it by 10, then I mod it by 10. This will give me the seven. And then finally, the, the last rule that you have to know, to grab the number on the far right or the number that's in the ones place, you mod it by 10. Now, the reason this all works is because we use a base 10 system, right? We have 10 digits that we use in our number system. And so we're able to mod it by 10. Okay, so how does this actually work to change the sprites? Well, let's take a look at how it works. So let's start with the hundreds place. So all we need to do on the hundreds place is as soon as we receive the start value, we need to, uh, so every single time we receive the start value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever number is in countdown. So just for an example, I'm gonna type in 899 and hit enter. You'll notice that my countdown is actually count, counting down the numbers. What we're gonna do is we are just gonna use the information that we just learned. We're gonna use these three, um, or rather these four ways of isolating a place value, we're going to use these 
each second that the countdown timer is running. So every time the number changes right here, we're going to use our code to isolate each place value. Okay, so let me go back to the hundreds place. So you'll notice that it's 862, 860. So you'll notice that the hundreds place is not changing. So every time this number changes, we're just going to be checking and we're going to be switching our sprite to whatever value is in the hundreds place. But you'll notice that it's it's still eight. So every time it runs, it's just going to stay as eight. So in order to do that, I first need to go to control and grab a repeat until block. Okay, and I'm going to repeat this until my countdown. So I go to variables and I grab countdown until countdown equals zero. So this loop is going to run and we're going to be checking the number every time uh, until countdown gets to zero. And again, if I'm going too fast, be sure you pause the video or even rewind the video and then just catch up with what I'm doing and then hit play again. Okay, so every time this happens, I want to change this sprite to whatever the number in the hundreds place is. So I can do that by going over first to looks. And I want to grab the block that says switch costume two. And I'm going to drop that inside of this, um, inside of the repeat block. And I want to change it to whatever uh, I'm looking at the hundreds place here. So I need to use uh, the mod and floor division commands to be able to isolate this place value. So the way I do that is I'm going to grab a floor division value or a floor division block and change it to floor. And just remember, I'm going to switch back to the text um, sprite and just remember to find, to isolate a number that's on the far left of a multi-digit number. I would floor divide it by the place value that it's in. So if I'm in the hundreds place, I need to floor divide this number by 100. So what I did is I grabbed a divide block and I'm putting it inside of the floor block. And the number that I'm actually dividing is whatever the countdown currently is. So if you watch when I click this, it's seven, right? And you'll notice that the seven is not changing, but in 10 seconds, this will switch to six. So let's just watch this for a second. So you'll see it's still seven, still seven, three, two, one, and now it's six. So I'm going to drop that in there. And you'll notice that now my hundreds place is six. Okay. And we're going to keep doing that until we get down to zero. Okay. So now I can actually do the exact same thing for the tens place, except it works just a little differently. So I'll grab another repeat until block. And just to make this a little easier, uh, here's a trick that I can do. I can take my little block of code here and I'll hover over top of the sprite that I want to add it to. You can see that the sprite shakes and I let it go. You'll notice my block goes back to where it was. And over here, I now have, I've now copied that little block of code in there. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time it's a little different. So what I need to do is I am floor dividing the countdown number by its place value. So this is the tens place. So I'm going to divide it by 10. And just, just so you know, if you look here, this value is going to be 63 because 10 goes into 630 10 times, but now it should be 62 because 10 goes into 624 10, uh, 62 times. Okay. Once I have that, I need to mod it by 10 because I need to grab that middle number, that tens place. So if you look here, again, this is going to be 60 because it says 602. Once it gets to 599, you'll notice that this says 59, but I just want the nine, right? I don't want 59. So all I have to do is mod this by 10. And you'll notice now it's going to be eight because we've got 587, 586. It's now eight. So if I drop this, oops, let's grab a switch costume block. 
switch costume, there we go. And let's drop this inside of switch costume block. Okay. And if you look there, you'll see that we've got R6, so 562. Let's just make sure that this switches to five. Our, our two outermost numbers are changing. Uh, let's now go ahead and look at the ones place. So we're gonna do the same thing, but if you remember, the ones is slightly different. All we need to do is just mod this value by 10. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a repeat until block again. And again, I'm gonna say, grab the equals and just say as long as countdown, repeat rather until countdown equals zero. And I'm going to switch our costume to whatever the countdown number is, mod 10. And this should be pretty much the end of our program, as you can see. So I'm going to just hit stop, and let's, let's do a quick test here. Let's try it with 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2... One. Now you'll notice that it does not go all the way down to zero. And let's just see if we can figure out why it doesn't go all the way down to zero. So we know that we're talking about the ones place sprite right here. And what's happening is this block repeats until the countdown becomes zero. So as soon as the countdown becomes zero, it stops changing the costume. So once it's at one, right, it's the, it's the last value that it's on. I'll just show you again. Do three. Oops, let me put this back. Just do three again. Three, two. When the costume hits one, it changes to one. And then our countdown goes to zero. The loop goes back up. And because zero is equal to zero, this stops and it never changes our costume to, to zero. So one way I can fix that, there's a couple ways you could do this, but I'm just going to say negative one because this will force the loop to go to zero. And then obviously zero mod 10 is going to be zero because 10 goes into zero, zero times uh, with no remainder. So it's going to switch it to zero. And then when it goes back up, it's, it's finally going to stop. So let's just see if this works. We'll put in three, two, one, there we go. It'll flash five times and then it should stop. Okay, so there is our timer program. So if any of this does not make sense at all, for example, mod and floor division, it is pretty confusing at first. So if, if this does not make sense, be sure to come and see me during enrichment or during lunch and I can help you with it. Otherwise, uh, make sure you click save Make sure you share your program, copy the link. So if you don't forget, you hit share here, come down and copy link, copy this link that's right here, and be sure to turn that in so you get credit. All right, we'll see you next time.